Welcome back. We're on Judges chapter 6. The Israelites did evil in the Lord's sight. So the Lord handed them over to the Midianites for seven years. The Midianites were so cruel that the Israelites made hiding places for themselves in the mountains, caves, and strongholds. Whenever the Israelites planted their crops, marauders from Midian, Amalek, and the people of the east would attack Israel, camping in the land and destroying crops as far away as Gaza. They left the Israelites with nothing to eat, taking all the sheep, goats, cattle, and donkeys. Wait. They left the Israelites with nothing to eat, taking all the sheep, goats, cattle, and donkeys. And Yahweh let this happen? Don't you think this is the kind of thing that there would be divine intervention to prevent? I mean, the Israelites could have used these animals as sin offerings, guilt offerings. Burnt offerings to bring a pleasing aroma to the Lord. Yahweh didn't think about that. What are they going to use? How are they going to redeem themselves? Now, oh, maybe you didn't want these animals. Maybe one of the sheep was blind. Maybe one of the goats was deaf. Maybe one of the cattle had a weird moo. Maybe one of the donkeys had a scab. Or maybe this is just a bunch of bullshit and none of it actually happened. These enemy hordes coming with their livestock and tents were as thick as locusts. They arrived on droves of camels too numerous to count. And they stayed until the land was stripped bare. So Israel was reduced to starvation by the Midianites. Then the Israelites cried out to the Lord for help. Oh my God. All right. You know what? <laughs> All right. People are products of their environment, all right? This can be demonstrated. We can see this all around the world, all right? So with Yahweh delivering these people to other people who do evil as a punishment for doing evil, how does he expect to solve this problem? He's just making it worse, right? It, does, it doesn't work that way. Yahweh is fucking retarded, all right? I mean, you, people have to put this shit in perspective. You know, the people who believe in this shit, they're, they're not, like, really putting this stuff in perspective. You have to think about this. It doesn't make any sense. If you want people to be good, you can't put them in the hands of evil people. All right? It, it doesn't work. I, Yahweh, it doesn't work. When they cried out to the Lord because of Midian, the Lord sent a prophet to the Israelites. He said, This is what the Lord, the God of Israel, says. I brought you up from I brought you up out of slavery in Egypt. I rescued you from the Egyptians and from all who oppressed you. No, that was their ancestors that Yahweh did that for, and he didn't really do much in the way of a re rescuing them from oppression, since what what happened? Oh yeah, Yahweh proceeded to enslave them himself. I drove out your enemies and gave you their land. I told you, I am the Lord your God. You must not worship the other gods of the Amorites in whose land you now live. But you have not listened to me. Then the angel of the Lord came and sat beneath the great tree at Ophrah, which belonged to Joash of the clan of Abizur. Gideon, son of Joash, was threshing wheat at the bottom of a winepress to hide the grain from the Midianites. The angel of the Lord appeared to him and said, Mighty hero, the Lord is with you. Sir, Gideon replied, If the Lord is with us, why has all this happened to us? That's a good fucking question. That is a good fucking question. Gideon gets points. And where are all the miracles our ancestors told us about? That's another good fucking question. Go, Gideon. Didn't they say the Lord brought us out of Egypt? But now the Lord has abandoned us and handed us over to the Midianites, which again makes no fucking sense. Duh, Yahweh! Duh. Then the Lord turned to him and said, Go with the strength you have and rescue Israel from the Midianites. I am sending you. <laughs> the Lord turned to him. <laughs> okay. <laughs> But Lord, Gideon replied, how can I rescue Israel? My clan is the weakest in, in the whole tribe of Manasseh, and I am the le and I am the least in my entire family.
The Lord said to him, I will be with you, and you will destroy the Midianites as if you were fighting against one man. <laughs> because that always solves the problem of evil, destroying people even though it seems to keep coming up and they have to keep going to war all over again. Gideon replied, If you are truly going to help me, show me a sign to prove that it is really the Lord speaking to me. And that is another good fucking point from Gideon. Go, Gideon! Don't go away until I come back and bring my offering to you. What offering? What offering? <laughs> he answered, I will stay here until you return. Gideon hurried home. <laughs> Gideon hurried home. He cooked a young goat and with a basket. What? How can he cook a young goat? How can he cook a young goat? Wasn't that one of the Let's go back up here. That was one that was one of the things that they fucking took. That was one of the things they fucking took. He doesn't have a goat. He doesn't have a fucking goat. Where the fuck? Oh, here's a goat. Uh. No, he doesn't have a fucking goat. Jesus Christ, this is fucking retarded. People believe that... Th think about this shit, people. I'm not trying to be insulting. I'm asking you to think about it. I Sorry, I need to calm down. Alright, he cooked a young goat, and with a basket of flour, he baked some bread without yeast. Then carrying the meat in a basket and the broth in a pot, he brought them out and presented them to the angel who was under the great tree. The angel of God said to him, Place the meat and the unleavened bread on this rock and pour the broth over it. And Gideon did as he was told. Then the angel of the Lord touched the meat and bread with the tip of the staff in his hand, and fire flamed up from the rock and consumed all he had brought. And the angel of the Lord disappeared. When Gideon realized that it was the angel of the Lord, he cried out, Oh, sovereign Lord, I'm doomed! I have seen the angel of the Lord face to face! It is all right, the Lord replied. Do not be afraid, you will not die. And Gideon built an altar to the Lord there and named it Yahweh Shalom, which means the Lord is peace. <laughs> and what a fucking lie that is! Jesus Christ! The altar remains in Ophrah in the land of the clan of Abizur to this day. That night, the Lord said to Gideon, Take the second bull from your father's herd, the one that is seven years old. Pull down your father's altar to Baal and cut down the Asherah pole standing beside it. Then build an altar to the Lord your God here on this hilltop sanctuary, laying the stones carefully. Sacrifice the bull as a burnt offering on the altar, using as fuel the wood of the Asherah pole you cut down. So Gideon took ten of his servants and did as the Lord had commanded. But he did it at night because he was afraid of the other members of his father's household and the people of the town. <laughs> Early the next morning, as the people of the town began to stir, someone discovered that the altar of Baal had been broken down and that the Asherah pole beside it had been cut down. In their place, a new altar had been built, and on it were the remains of the bull that had been sacrificed. The people said to each other, Who did this? And after asking around and making a careful search, they learned that it was Gideon, the son of Joash. Bring out your son, the men of the town demanded of Joash. He must die for destroying the altar of Baal and for cutting down the Asherah pole. But Joash shouted to the mob that confronted him, Why are you defending Baal? Will you argue his case? Whoever pleads his case will be put to death by morning. If Baal truly is a god, let him defend himself and destroy the one who broke down his altar. That's a good point against Baal. <laughs> From then on, Gideon was called Jerob Baal, which means let Baal defend himself because he broke down Baal's altar. Soon afterward, the armies of Midian, Amalek, and the people of the east formed an alliance against Israel and crossed the Jordan, camping in the valley of Jezreel. Then the Spirit of the Lord took possession of Gideon. He blew a ram's horn as a call to arms, and the men of the clan of Abizer came to him. He also sent messengers throughout Manasseh, Asher, Zebulun, and Naphtali, summoning their warriors, and all of them responded. Then Gideon said to God, If you are truly going to use me to rescue Israel as you promised, prove it to me in this way. 
I will put a wool fleece on the threshing floor tonight. If the fleece is wet with a dew in the morning, but the, drown, but the ground is dry, then I will know that you are going to help me rescue Israel as you promised. And that is just what happened. When Gideon got up early the next morning, he squeezed the fleece and wrung out a whole bowl full of water. Then Gideon said to God, Please, don't be angry with me, but let me make one more request. Let me use the fleece for one more test. This time, let the fleece remain dry while the ground around it is wet with dew. So that night, God did as Gideon asked. The fleece was dry in the morning, but the ground was covered with dew. That was Judges chapter 6. We'll be back with chapter 7. Have a good one. Peace out.